Hello and welcome to PAC TV Community News. This week, PAC TV Community News previews an artist exhibit in Kingston. And that's what this show is mainly about jumping into the air called levitation. And we take a tour of the soon to be completed police station in Duxbury. There's been a lot of activity and, and we're getting real close and, and we're very excited about that. PAC TV Community News stopped by the Plymouth Philharmonic Gala to give you a peek at all the fun. We have about 325 people here and everybody is so excited to support both causes. And we give you a sneak peek at North Pembroke Elementary's upcoming performance of Willy Wonka. Town Talk comes from Duxbury, and tonight we begin a new series called Local Eats, where Kim and I visit and review local restaurants. It's all coming up on PAC TV Community News. Local visual artists' large-scale works are bound to inspire and please the eye. Carol Bosse, whose artistic creations are found in public and private collections throughout the United States, Europe, and Japan, creates her own unusual artwork from her studio in Kingston. She'll be holding an open art show at the South Shore Art Center in Cohasset on February 22nd through April 7th called Levitations, Horsing Around. PAC TV Community News met up with Carol at our local studio in Kingston to see a preview of our upcoming show and learn more about her. We're in the middle of a batch of brand new works here. Everything that you can see in the studio at the moment was done in the last 14 months or so. Uh, that's kind of a lot of acreage of paint in a pretty short amount of time. Uh, that's because I have a show coming up. And uh, a show very often is very much a meditation that goes on for a year or two years on one subject. In this case, it happens to be horses. But my paintings are never about the subjects that are recognizable. In fact, um, Kate McQuaid uh, in the Boston Globe wrote a very interesting review where she said that all my paintings are abstractions um, with recognizable, she said, big painterly abstractions with recognizable objects in them. So in this case, the recognizable objects are horses. And they're horses doing something that apparently only wild horses or young horses tend to do. Sometimes uh, saddle horses and trained horses do it too, but only when they're first let out of their stalls and they have so much energy, they jump up in the air. And that's what this show is mainly about jumping into the air called levitation. As you can see, this painting is eight feet by 10 feet, um, a little bit under life size. The, the Gypsy Vanner is life size. The, uh, the first horse, uh, called that painting called High Horse, is about life size, but there wasn't quite room for two life size horses to get them far enough off the ground for their jump to really be felt in this composition. Uh, drawing is a wonderful way of thinking out loud to me. And when I first started painting horses, I wanted to study them more. I wanted to know their anatomy better and to understand their movement more. And so I started by um, looking at books of horses and copying and tracing and studying individual parts of the horses. And then I started doing them on tracing paper, which I could collage onto canvas. So these little pictures, they're only 12 inches wide, most of them, 12 or 14 inches wide, are little studies that I've collaged onto canvas. And the wonderful thing about drawing them onto tracing paper is that I can superimpose them with each other. So you can see one drawing through another drawing, which creates an amazing effect of movement like in a cartoon, you know, when a critter is running, you will see its legs drawn many times, and that gives the effect of motion. The paintings always have to look like paint. That is, 
there's no attempt ever in what I do to make a kind of trompe l'oeil or realism to fool you into thinking that it's real, only that the event is real, the experience is real. Uh, the motion, movement, are more important than a kind of static representation. The sense of play and enjoyment of work has really been consistent all through this year that I've been working on this body of work. And I'm making little puzzles in some of these pictures uh, where there's an overlapping of one image which is reversed, overlapping the other. Uh, and it's put me in a wonderful frame of mind. Duxbury's new police station is nearly complete. Construction started early last year on the 17,000 square foot building that houses state-of-the-art technology and other features that will provide Duxbury with one of the best equipped police stations in Massachusetts. PAC-TV Community News met up with Chief Matthew Clancy to tour the new facility. Well, as we uh, sit here today and we're, we're taping this, by the time you see this, the police station will be uh, pretty much at substantial completion. And we're looking at uh, probably the end of February for the contractor to get to that point. And uh, a couple of weeks thereafter to take care of punch list. And then it's a, a building that's ready to, uh, for us to occupy. So uh, it's a, been a lot of activity and, and we're getting real close and, and we're very excited about that. This is a very functional building that flows very nicely. So we have a, a component of the building that's designed with the officer's daily routines in mind and for the officer's comfort in mind to, the, to that extent. At the same time, we have a section of the building that's designed for, uh, as truly public spaces. We wanted to make sure that our public meeting room, which also serves as our police training room, is available for public events. But we also wanted to make sure that that building uh, was easily accessible to the public, that they didn't have to go through a series of checkpoints and, and be escorted uh, by armed guards, if you will, to various sections of the building. Uh, you know, we have our public meeting room set up that uh, the folks can access that without having to really get into the, the inner workings of the police station. They don't even have to get into where we are now. We're standing in the police lobby and access to that, that uh, public meeting room is outside of this and it really is a self-sufficient section of the building. We also have an administrative wing and the same thoughts were put into play there where we looked at uh, you know, what, from administrative component, myself, uh, the deputy chief, administrative assistant, administrative staff, the support staff, you know, where do we need to go during our day? Um, and where are the folks that uh, probably see more visitors from the public, uh, from other, you know, other department heads, other government folks and residents come in to see us, uh, more so than folks need to get into the, uh, the operational sections of the police station. At the same time, uh, you know, we've developed a level of security in the building where we try to limit uh, some of the some of the uh, the public access points uh, from a security standpoint. We also have some new features in our booking and detention area, um, uh, you know, using the the most modern equipment. To uh, and we have, in fact we have fewer holding cells here than we do in our current building, uh, because uh, the equipment that we have and the security systems that we have allow us to do that here. We also have some features out back when it uh, we have a carport that is sort of a new. Uh, a new feature in some of the more modern police stations. The carport allows the cars to stay high and dry and it helps to in the efficiency of our response to emergencies in, in, in clement weather. This building is also equipped with an outbuilding where we'll be able to store some of the equipment that we have now that we don't necessarily have room for and it's really desirable to keep them high and dry. So we're really happy, we're really close. Uh, now it's time for us to really focus on preparing the old building for a move in our police station for a move, but um, by the time, like, again, by the time you look at, uh, at uh, what we're showing you here today, uh, this building should be just about done. The Phil hosted a rockin' gala at the Kingston Country Club this month. The Plymouth Philharmonic teamed up with Visiting Angels to host a night filled with great food, a silent and live auction, an amusing dance contest, and some other entertaining activities. Pack TV Community News went there to capture all the excitement. <laughs> Sí, 
I've always wanted to be on the red carpet doing interviews and I finally have my opportunity here at the Gala of Giving for the Plymouth Philharmonic as well as Visiting Angels and I'm here with music director Stephen Kiri Dionis. Thank you. Very nice. nice to see you, Donna. It's, a, it's, it's very exciting. First time that we put these two organizations together to create a, a uniquely wonderful event and it's all to the good, to the community, to music, to those who need and we're going to have a good time doing it. Absolutely, yeah, and it's so wonderful to see you guys working with other organizations. Yeah. You've always done a wonderful job with your outreach programs, with your music programs. Tell me a little bit about working with Visiting Angels and what it means to you personally to be able to help support seniors in our communities. Uh, you know, when we talk about outreach and we talk about education, we always think kids right away, but they both have to extend through, uh, you know, inter intergenerationally in terms of the, the needs of the entire community. Uh, I have to profess that my first hand working with Visiting Angels will be tonight. Our, our hero with the Plymouth Philharmonic is Deb Cox, and she has worked really hard to make sure this collaboration works beautifully, and so far it's been fantastic. I'm here with Deborah Cox, who's the managing director of the Philharmonic. Deborah, this event is absolutely amazing, but it really is all for wonderful cause. Tell me a little bit about the outreach programs of the Philharmonic, which is being supported by this event. Well, as everybody knows, we have fabulous concerts. One of the things I don't think they realize is that we do a lot of tuition-free outreach programs in the schools, the public schools. We have a high school choral consortium that involves seven area high schools that play with, that sing with our orchestra. We also have um, children's choirs, a 130-member children's choir that sings with our orchestra, and all of these are to help bring music to our community and enrich people's lives through music and the gala of giving tell me how many people are here tonight to help to support you and visiting angels we have about 325 people here and everybody is so excited to support both causes and we are here at the gala of giving and now we're talking to Nate Murray who is the president of visiting angels of the South Shore now Nate you have run a fundraiser for the last three years for seniors tell me a bit about that and about how you came to work with the Philharmonic well dancing with the angels is a fundraiser we started in 2010 to raise money for the special needs emergency Emergency fund for Old Colony and South Shore Elder Services. We provide private home care at Visiting Angels, but we wanted to do something for people who may not be able to access our services, and so we did it in a fun way. Which is absolutely fantastic. Uh, organizations collaborating to support the entire community is amazing. Tell us a little bit more about the Special Needs Emergency Fund for Seniors and what that money does for folks in our communities. Sure, the Special Needs Emergency Fund for Old Colony and South Shore Elder Services provides essentials for elders who cannot afford very basics in life. Things as simple as shoes, prescription medication, a tank of oil. Uh, it it's really can provide things that, that is sort of a, a, a fund that's a very available for the things that come up that aren't planned for, that aren't part of a program, that aren't part of a state grant. And for folks who are in need or if people know people in need, they can contact either the Old Colony or the South Shore Elder Services and they don't have to be members. It can be a one-time occasion if, if they have an emergency, they can reach out. That's right. Any citizen in the United States, in, in Massachusetts who's um, eligible, who lives in one of their towns, can apply for the Special Needs Fund. Now tell me a little bit about the dance competition that's happening later. I hear all kinds of excitement and people are getting a little excited and nervous. Well, if you've watched Dancing with the Stars, this is better. This is five teams, all from area organizations, all the amateurs who are going to have a good time and a fun time and try to raise more money for the Special Needs Fund in the film. Uh, and now I'd like to introduce our Master of Ceremonies, Matt Vittori. Well, thank you for having me back by popular demand. Even though this doesn't say that, but I think you were thinking it, right, Harry? I'm uh, really glad to be here tonight. Now, uh, just before 8 o'clock, we begin the dance competition with our five amateur teams performing Broadway-inspired dancing. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
the Gala of Giving, a night of sizzling hot dance moves and all kinds of fun, all for a good cause, our community. For Pack TV Community News, I'm Donna Rodriguez. Pembroke's North Elementary School is presenting its performance of Willy Wonka. The students and staff have been hard at work designing and building sets, creating costumes, and of course rehearsing. The Willy Wonka performance dates are February 28th, 7 p.m., March 1st, 7 p.m., and March 2nd at 2 p.m. You can call the school for tickets. PAC TV Community News went to a recent rehearsal to view all the upcoming fun. Chocolate and a mirror call it to the candy man. Satisfying and delicious. Talk about your childhood wishes. You could even eat the dishes. We give him fruit juice for breakfast, plus melons and mangoes and cereals, bananas and cream. Then Friday to bacon, tomatoes, and mashers, and bread rolls, and buns by Zerry. Too late. Great, he's gonna give his cold to millions of people. I think I've had too much chocolate. Huh? Huh? A chip! I like the singing, I like the singing the most, yeah. So you do a good job. Thanks. <laughs> so you know all the words and you're all set to go now? Uh, I know all the words in the first half, but uh, yeah, <laughs> pretty much. So you don't know the words in the second half? No, I do, not as much though. <laughs> I had to work on that. We're so excited. As you can see, the kids are having a lot of fun. And it's a lot of hard work. We started uh, in January. And so it's about six, seven weeks. And we're very excited. their kid to be. He's honest, he's caring, and he's truthful. So. Cause I've got a golden ticket. I've got a golden twinkle in my eye. I never had a chance to shine, never have a song to sing, but someday after the world is mine, what an amazing thing. Cause I've got a golden ticket. I've got a This week begins a new series called Local Eats, where Larry and I visit and review many of the local restaurants in our area. Larry and I are very excited about presenting to you this new Dining Out series, and we hope you enjoy it too. Our first outing was to a very popular and friendly pub in Pembroke. Pack TV Community News. We're here at the Alumni Cafe in Pembroke, and Larry and I have been invited by owner Patrick Gibbons to check out the atmosphere and try some of his um, incredible looking dishes. We've been here for 13 years now, 13 and a half years. Uh, the reason we opened up was the building was vacant, and we decided to open up a small pub that um, you know could serve the community. There was nothing around at the time because the local one closed and. 
I was kind of the only one in town and um, you know here we have I think 26 TVs seven or eight 60 inch you know we've grown over the years so it's um, it's a very very you know it's a very comfortable local place for people to come in families I do a lot of families a lot of catering and uh, the one thing I've been fortunate is uh, I've kept the food consistent all these years and, and hopefully everyone loves it and by the way things are going it, it looks pretty good so you know it's it's nice to uh, it's nice to be in the community like this so Larry, what do you think? Well, the food here is very good. I've been here before a number of occasions. I uh, enjoy coming here. Friendly atmosphere, local pub atmosphere. A lot of local people come here. It's conveniently located at the uh, intersection of Route 139 and 53 in Pembroke. And uh, it's, we're here in midday and it's already packed with people, so it seems to be a very popular place in Pembroke and a very loyal, loyal fan base yes, here. Yes, I would give it a try if you haven't been here before. That's my opinion. Uh, uh, so let's uh, chow down because this food is looking really good. Bruschetta pizza is what I'm going to try. This looks incredible. Uh, that's incredible. Mm, very good. Mm. Chicken broccoli penne, which is really good. Oh, it's so good. Some of this incredible looking spinach, spinach salad, which I absolutely love spinach. And it's got all kinds of stuff in it, carrots and bacon and these tomatoes. And I saw a woman eating it earlier and she said it was fantastic. Mmm, excellent. Sweet clams, I love them. The Alumni Cafe was an outstanding family-friendly dining experience. Their staff served up a variety of menu items for us to enjoy, and we want to thank owner Patrick Gibbons for his gracious hospitality. Come to the Journey Dance, an intuitive method of using movement to discover and celebrate our inner strengths. Journey Dance will be held on February 23rd at 1 p.m. at Live Life Believe, located at 10 Cordage Park Circle in Plymouth. It's open to all, but you must RSVP to VinFen at the phone number shown below. This dance event is to raise awareness for an upcoming dance fundraiser for transitional age youth who receive services from VINFEN, a nonprofit human services agency providing services to individuals with psychiatric illness, behavioral and developmental disabilities. There's a $10 suggested donation. Do you know what it means to walk around the clock and help the fight against cancer? You can find out by joining the Relay for Life of Greater Plymouth. Interested? Come to their next meeting on Wednesday, February 27th at 7 p.m. at Party Light in Plymouth Industrial Park. New teams are forming now and you're invited to join in. Find out more from their website, relayforlife.org and search for the Greater Plymouth, Massachusetts chapter. Hello, Richard McDonald, your town manager. Uh, first off, it's been a little over a week since we had the terrible storm come through town. I want to thank all the residents in town for their tremendous patience. It was a difficult time for all of us, and we are still trying to get the town back together. I want to thank our public safety and our public uh, works personnel for the tremendous job they did. They worked through the clock to try and get the streets open uh, so we could get the power lines back up. Uh, we are preparing for town meeting. Town meeting is the second Saturday in March, March 9th. Uh, we are meeting with the Finance Committee, the Fiscal Advisory Committee, and the Board of Selectmen as we review budgets and articles to prepare for that meeting. In reference to the Powder Point Bridge, uh, construction continues. It has obviously been de delayed due to the storm issues, but the crews are out there and our aim is to have it open for the beach season and for our public safety personnel. And finally, the Board of Selectmen are in the process of interviewing the finalist uh, for the town manager position. Uh, hopefully that person will be chosen very soon and uh, we can move on with the business of the town. Thank you very much and have a good day. Rocky Nook. Grace Beach, Kingston, 
The winds are starting to pick up. Winter Storm Nemo 2013. And the wind is literally blowing right out of the northeast. Thanks for watching PAC TV Community News. Replay times are listed at PACTV.org. Click on the PC and logo to watch each complete edition or individual story. See us on YouTube just by searching for PAC TV Community News. And also like us on Facebook to receive previews each week with links to all our stories. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next week on PAC TV Community News.